Hey everybody, Jeff Simon here for Social Flight on another cool building stage on our Titan T51D Mustang. Today we have put the elevators and our horizontal stabilizers back on the aircraft and we're going to talk about something a little different than we've talked about before and that's going to be fiberglass. Uh, many uh, parts of the aircraft that could be things like fairings, in this case the tips on our horizontal stabilizer and elevator, vertical stabilizer, rudder, uh, the uh, fairing that's going to be our dorsal fin, all sorts of other pieces are made out of fiberglass. And most fiberglass pieces, while they come from the manufacturer, well-shaped and etc., um, still require a fair amount of fitting. And that's certainly if we're just talking about trimming, that's, that's great, but in our case, we really want to make sure that we have this aircraft looking as good as possible. And some of the things that really show up on planes and draw the eye are where you see a wing tip or an elevator tip or something like that coming in. And the way that it fits, you wind up with some waviness or some clearance issues to it. And so I want to give you a few tips about how to do this and take you through the project a little bit about what we are doing to fit these on our Mustang. Now the first thing I want to say right up front, and we have certainly learned this ourselves, is use quality materials. Use aircraft grade fiberglass. Don't go to a big box store and, and get one of their resins and, and fabric that you can get right off the shelf. That stuff is junk. It will not work well on your aircraft. Go to a quality supplier and get quality materials. The second is depending on what you're doing, you can either get a type of material that is uh, has uh, the fiberglass just built into the actual material, like chopped fiberglass that if you're not looking for big structural strength, you're just looking to kind of fill gaps and help you sand something down, that's fine. Um, in other cases, you may want to go and actually glass using, um, using weave and using fabric. And um, that's something I'm not going to pretend we're an expert in. We are learning the hard way uh, on our part, but we have come up with some cool techniques that I'm going to show you right here. Now, the first technique that uh, that's helping us is the first thing we did was actually trim these two as the you know to fit, and that actually kind of comes in. But at that point, you've got a wave essentially. You've got a little bit overlap where the gap just isn't what we wanted to have. Um, when we're dealing with sheet metal, to think about maybe shrinking it or doing something or stretching material or maybe cutting a relief into it and bringing it together. But in our case, what we came up with that's worked really well is to line uh, the metal part of the structure with simple packing tape, simple clear tape uh, as a release agent essentially on there. And then use this high quality um, uh, fiberglass that has the chopped fibers inside of it, that has its structural strength. Put some of that on the inside and, and then clamp it on into place. Let it ooze out a little bit. And then what happens is the inside of that now is your perfect contour on the airfoil. And in this case, on the leading edge of our horizontal stabilizer, on the trailing edge as well, that you, you now have this perfect line. That is what you actually want. You can then sand down to that line. Another thing that we were able to do, which is very cool, is just as it was drying, um, this material was fantastic as it got down to a point that it was sort of a, a very firm putty. We were able to take a knife, a utility knife, and just cut the line we actually wanted, peel it right off, and that protected a lot of, or uh, prevented us from having a lot of sanding later uh, in those areas. Now, in addition to the base level of having fiberglass, uh, of going in and putting in fiberglass for structure, you then can move on to that to just things that are good for paint like a bondo or a glaze and, and other types of things. And in that case, you also want to make sure you get very high quality materials um, that'll help you along the way. So uh, um, we'll have you watch some of the process, a little more of the process and uh, and hopefully uh, learn some of the things that maybe we learned the hard way. Follow me along and let's get going. All right, so Lither and I right now are going to do the right horizontal stabilizer and we're going to do what we talked about with that. So Lither, if you could pull these off, I'll show everybody what we've uh, marked out. 
Okay, so what you can see here is that there's a fair amount of gap um, where this essentially, we really want this to be just perfectly contoured, but right now it's got a little bit of give, which means that when we put rivets in here, we're gonna see some waviness in this area. So what we've done is we've marked this as being a fill area inside. And we've done it on here, we did it on three other spots uh, in addition to that, that covers it. Now, if I remove this, then you can actually uh, see here, let me zoom this back out. You can actually see that if I remove this, well, all we can do is we can, we can put tape on the inside that covers the area we don't want to get any of that material on that we're gonna use. And then also we're gonna put tape along this portion and all of the metal. When we, when we come up and it's all mixed, then we're going to bring it back onto the piece and we're going to essentially smoosh it into place, allow that to take this beautiful per, uh, contour of this part in here, and then we can kind of cut the edge and go to the point that uh, we actually install it, and then we actually go and file this part down. This is what we will eventually sand down because it'll be strong from underneath all the way out in this area. And so it really gives us a, a, a kind of a nice continuum that we can go down and get to the uh, get to the contour that we're actually looking for that'll fit the wing. So uh, this is going to be a real time sensitive project. So uh, let's get to work. Here you go, Luther. All right, let's fit this on. I'm gonna hold this wide open. You're in charge of the back. Yep. Got the back? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Now let's start putting Clicos in. I think that'll work really well. Okay. All right, we're gonna let it set and, uh, and then we'll do a second round. All right, so a uh, moment of truth, we're gonna be able to remove this now. Just a few minutes after we set this in place and things started to firm up, I had this really cool moment that uh, I filmed where, it w where we took a, a utility knife and just ran it down here and just peeled up the soft fiberglass that was in this to make this beautiful edge all around it. And uh, well, it turns out that uh, I didn't press the record button. But if you imagine that that's what happened, you'd know that that was a really cool way of being able to do this. So now we are going to uh, remove all this. So we'll take the Clicos off and uh, show you what it looks like inside. You ready, Luther? That's it. Okay. Absolutely. Oh, there we go. Okay, pull it out. All right. So inside here, you can see now, let me zoom that out, um, that it's got this really beautiful edge along this that formed exactly what we need. And then it's got this section, which is backed by tape that we can just take right off. Um, and that'll, you know, be uh, protected. So we'll work on that, get that off, and then uh, go to the next step. Yep. Yeah, it just, it takes some effort, but right. it'll, yeah, see, look, that worked.
<laughs> That's the chunks we didn't need. All right, so sometimes things are a little harder than you even plan for. And uh, we started with the bottom of the rudder, uh, and that went pretty well. Tell me a little bit about what went into that, because I know you and Jake worked on that. Yep, so it was just a, it was a lot of like looking at pictures and trying to get ideas of how to cut the, the rear side of it. So we decided to go cut as, as little as possible, mm -hmm. just because some of the pictures we saw, there was uh, large openings, which we didn't want. Right. So we just cut a small slot just for the radiator bracket hinge thing to to clear it. So uh -huh. I think we cut the minimal amount and it looks so, perfect. Yeah. So what Luther's referring to here is that there's a hinge point back here uh, on the uh, bottom of the rudder. and. Since you have to move back and forth here, you need access for that. Okay. Additionally, it's important that we want to be able to remove the rudder without having everything permanently mounted. Mm -hmm. And so you had to cut just the minimum amount of access, yep. figure out what that made se make sense, and then put nut plates in all the way around so that this can be removed because you have to remove the bottom of this fairing and then the rudder could be removed, mm -hmm. which is going to matter in the future for maintenance. Yep. Now that part of things that you guys did went very well, um, but then we got to the rudder, to the horizontal stabilizer tips. Yep. Uh, tell me about what's going on with that. So, so since it's two pieces, since there's the there's, elevator tip, there's the elevator tip, and then the horizontal stabilizer tip, and we ran into a problem where the elevator tip was interfering with the horizontal stabilizer tip. Yeah, and. It was it was a lot of a lot of work to to get this this piece to finally work with the elevator tip. Uh, we had to we had to make it bigger. We had to fill in some of the bowing. Yeah, uh, it's hard. There were a lot of challenges so there. So just to explain that, that so you can really see it, um, this is the horizontal stabilizer tip. You're looking at the inside, the part that you don't usually see, but but you can see that this has a, a whole concave portion of it and the tip of the elevator goes in here and goes up and down so that's that's kind of like the look that you're going for this one's untrimmed but that's the look that you're going for and it was a little tight which meant a lot of creative work including slicing this and spreading it making it a little bit bigger and then uh, get everything i mean every aircraft's a little bit different yeah. so we used a lot of techniques to make it work and now we're at the moment of truth where we're going to be able to start putting some primer on oh. seeing how it really looks yeah. and then um and then you can get both sides done mm -hmm. yeah, exciting what comes after this we get oh. these tips on oh uh, so we get these tips on and then it's the top of the rudder yep yeah okay so we got to get top of the rudder done top of the rudder and then after we paint it, obviously, look for imperfections and yep. fix that. Perfect. Um, so, I mean, we'll get the yeah. top of the rudder done. We'll get those done. We'll do the vertical um, uh, tail fin. Nut plates uh, for, uh, the, yep. uh, for the attachment piece. Yep, for yep, oven. yep. The dorsal fin, the yep. nut plates, and then we can move on from this phase. Yes. Uh, during a project, a lot of times you, you get into one type of building, like in this case, fiberglass and you're ready to be done with it. And then you, the nice thing on a plane like this, yep. uh, like this Mustang, is there are so many different types of things. You can work on electronics, you can work on hydraulics, you can work on mechanical nuts and bolts, you can work with sheet metal, you can work with fiberglass, it's all required. And so um, we'll be ready to finish the fiberglass phase and move on to a different, a different phase. Yep. All right, let's get this painted up and uh, see how it looks. Nice job. Yep, thank you.
All right, Lithra, that must have been, I tell you, watching it, I was exhausted. Yeah. That the work that you did on all those fiberglass fairings for the, the horizontal stabilizers, the elevator, the vertical tip, the rudder, and even the, the uh, dorsal fan yep. on top, mm -hmm. It was artwork, and it, it, it really was fantastic. What was, what did you learn, about, I guess, out of this is the biggest question. Right, it, it was just a lot of like experimenting, but I think we learned a lot of like how to manipulate the fiberglass to get the mm -hmm. bows out, how to add more material to get the bows out, and then uh, actually just fitting it onto the plane. Just, yeah, I mean, we really wanted it to be exactly. perfect. You, yep. you can use these parts for Titan as is, that's for sure. But we wanted things uh, to be, just kind of have our flair, our yep. touch mm -hmm. of what we wanted to make them a little bit perfect or a little bit different um, to fit the way that we yep. wanted to. And of course, when it comes to the dorsal fin, normally those are made of aluminum. But in our case, it's fiberglass so that we could hide our antennas underneath it for the most part. Yep. And so, uh, Man, it was uh, watch it, watching that, helping out. It's just like lots of solving problems. Right. And I will tell you, I'm not a fiberglass guy. No, so this was either. learning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe we're learning the hard way. I'm sure many of you out there are absolute experts in fiberglass and would have known many of these techniques. But I'll tell you, now that we've done it, was there one technique in particular that you think was the most helpful that you learned? towards the end that maybe would be you do things differently from the beginning? Yeah, so we actually tried experimenting with putting the fiberglass uh, fiberglass putty onto the, the wing and then putting the um, the tips on. Oh yeah. And that would fill the gaps of the bowing and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that was that was something that we learned all the way at the end. Yeah, and like using tape. tape. Yeah, yeah, we use packing tape as a release agent where that went over the surface. Then we put that kind of okay. fiberglass kitty hair yeah. stuff that had the yeah that had the fiberglass into it a little bit on there, put the tips on, and it just made this perfect contour, exactly what was wanted. Yep. Let it cure, peel it off, and then it's the outside yeah. that you sand yep. down to make it all smooth. Yep. That was pretty cool. It was pretty cool, yeah. Wow, well, thank you again. Yep. Fantastic, fantastic mm -hmm. work. Um, uh, as always, I'm gonna keep asking you, you're gonna come back, right? Yep. Like sure. a lot, yep. like we're yep. close, yep. okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, until next time, I'm Jeff Simon for Social Flight. Be sure to check out socialflight.com and the free apps for Apple and Android devices. Just search for Social Flight. It's all right there. We have tens of thousands of aviation events, destinations, very cool things every Tuesday night. Go to socialflightlive.com and we have amazing guests that come on, tell their stories, uh, famous people from aviation, and, and it's just fantastic. And then also, if you happen to fly, be sure to get our app and get out there and uh, fly to different destinations and play our fly to win challenge where you can win prizes. Until next time, I wish you all blue skies.